on today's Tech Help for Churches. The encoding settings, best for YouTube. Hi and welcome again to another episode of Tech Help for Churches. This is the show where every week I help you use the internet, new media, social media, etc. in your church. My name is Paul Allen Clifford. I'm your host. I'd love for you to ask your questions and leave your comments below the video. That's a great way to do it. But if you're listening to the audio, then you can absolutely head over to trinitydigitalmedia.com contact. There you'll find all my contact information. You can leave your comment there or just use one of the uh, ways mentioned on that particular site. So I was thinking, now what haven't I covered? And it occurred to me, yeah, I really haven't told you about um, what settings you should use to make the videos that you put on YouTube. So I uh, did a little research to just double check my memory and all, and I found a link from Google on how to do it. So I'll put a link down in the show notes uh, of what those settings are, but I thought that I would go over them pretty quickly because uh, some of the mistakes are pretty easy to fix. So first off, you want an MP4 container. All you really need to know is the file extension of the video should not end in WMV, should not end in MOV, QT, um, or something else. It should end in MP4. MP4. So that's the type of video if you want to think of it that way. But the codec, the set of instructions that the video uses to compress, CO, and decompress, DEC, codec, compress, decompress, is H.264. So for example, if you're making your videos on a Mac, you might export as ProRes 422 not as good as it could be. Uh, ProRes 422 is fine, it's just not as good for YouTube. Uh, so you could change that using either Compressor or free software like MPEG Stream Clip. That would be fine as well. So those are probably the first two things. Also, you're probably wondering what kind of audio you should use. Well, it can be audio, I mean, it can be mono, it can be stereo, it can be stereo plus 5.1 surround sound. Ah, did you even know you could do that? Well, you can. So that's uh, something else for you to consider. If you go with stereo, you're going to want 96 kilohertz. If you go with stereo um, plus 5.1, you're going to want 48 kilohertz. That's the sample rate, how quickly samples are taken. Um, the color space should be 420. Chances are you don't have to worry about that, but I'd rather mention it and not need to. Frames per second, uh, most of the standard ones are totally okay with YouTube. 24 frames a second, 25 frames a second, 30 frames a second, 48 frames a second, 50 and 60. Those are all permissible with YouTube. But YouTube prefers progressive as opposed to interlaced. So progressive is lines one, two, three, four, five, etc. are drawn in order. Uh, interlaced is lines one, three, five, seven, nine, and then once that's completely drawn, then it goes back and does two, four, six, and eight. So what you want to do is if you're doing like standard definition video, it tends to be uh, interlaced, so you'll want to de-interlace. So that's a setting that you would want to check. Now, for the bitrate of the video itself, that's of course dependent on the resolution of the video. And I'm not going to go over all of them because it goes down to 240 and up to 4K. Most of us are either doing standard definition video 480, 480 lines, high definition, 720 lines, 720p you might have heard of, or 1080p, 1080 lines. So let's start with 1080p, shall we? That should be 8 megabits a second. So when you're encoding, if you can push it up higher, you really don't need to. Uh, YouTube is going to knock that down. 
you can lower it, then it you're not getting the quality that uh, you could have. Uh, for 720p, 5 megabits. For 480p, 2.5 megabits, 2.5 megabits per second. So that's the next thing that I would do. And finally, YouTube doesn't really care whether it's 4x3 video or 16x9. If it's 4x3, we'll put the pillar boxes on either side of the video. But you shouldn't take... 4x3 video and put letter boxes above it and below it because that'll confuse YouTube and you'll end up with both letter boxes and pillar boxes and you'll end up with a little video in the middle with black all the way around. So you don't want to do that. So these are just some of the settings. As I say, I'll provide a link. So if you're doing 4K, you'll know what bit rate to use um, and a few other settings that are very important. If you don't understand these whatsoever, uh, I think what I would do is I would go and download MPEG Stream Clip. I'll put a link in the show notes to that as well. And MPEG Stream Clip is free encoding software and it al allows you to uh, transcode from whatever you have to whatever you want. So I also have a tutorial on how to use MPEG Stream Clip. It's actually pretty simple. You don't have to know what the settings mean in order to put in those settings. So that's probably a great resource for you to just go through, download the software, fire it up, throw your video in there, and just go through the checklist of settings on this YouTube page that I uh, tell you about and export it as an mp4 with the h.264 codec and then you'll be golden. Well I hope you like that uh, today's video and I hope you'll join me with my email newsletter where I'm providing more and more tips and tricks and news about the stuff that's happening over at trinitydigitalmedia.com. If you like that you'll also like the stuff that I'm selling at my store which is all church tech related resources created with you in mind, trying to save you some time, trying to um, give you more experience so that you don't have to search all over the internet. You can just have it at a one-stop shop where all your church tech training resources are available. Until next time, go out and change eternity. This is Paul Allen Clifford with TrinityDigitalMedia.com.